So hi, uh, thanks for coming. Uh, this talk is about GNOME Boxes. This is a format that I've been using for lightning talks. It's mostly a showcase of what Boxes is and what features we have. And I also want to do some demos so you get to, you, to, to know how, how things really work in practice. And uh, in the very end, I want to describe the, the features uh, I've been working on. Uh, I said I've been working on because it's pretty much just me working on, on boxes. I get some, some contributors from external projects that are like related to boxes, but full time in boxes is just me, so some of things are kind of moving in a slow pace. Uh, if you were here two years ago when I had a talk about GPU pass through, and at that time we were still experimenting, and then in the meanwhile, a lot of things happened uh, with uh, Flatpak containers and Silverblue, so a lot of plans changed, but we kind of end up moving a different way, so the problem kind of persists but now can be tackled in a, in a different way. So that's something I want to describe in the end for, for those who are already experienced with boxes and want more features. Uh, just for me to be able to assess like, the level of this, how many of you actually know boxes already? Could you please raise hands? Sweet. And how many of you use boxes? Because, nice, not as many. <laughs> so yeah, my name is Felipe Borges. I work for Red Hat in the desktop team, but I've been involved with GNOME for quite some time eight, nine years, and uh, I mostly work in boxes, but I also work in the settings in GNOME, so if you are like setting a printer, user accounts in GNOME, you are using my stuff. And lately I've been working also with portals to get, uh, I've been feeling very passionate about solving the Linux fragmentation uh, between distributions, and I've been working with Flatpak and portals. So I've been working really hard on trying to make applications able to integrate with the host operating system. And surprisingly, Box is a very good showcase for that because Box is an application that a lot of people wouldn't think we would be able to put in a container, especially because we are putting it, not just Box is the, the UI itself, but uh, we are putting libvirt and camu and everything inside of container and what we really require on the host is just access to the, to the hardware devices, right, to slash dev. So, so yeah, Box is also other than the virtualization features that we have. It sits on top of libvirt, so it's pretty much the same as Virt Manager, but it has a design that is oriented towards not requiring from the user to understand operating system internals. It's, the use case is, is more like I'm a web developer and I want to be able to test how my website does in Internet Explorer, or uh, I am a gamer and I want to play some indie game on a Windows machine, or I work in a distribution and I want to pack stuff. I actually get to use boxes a lot on my everyday life because in Red Hat I work with RHEL, so I have RHEL VMs, and sometimes I just need to drop a, a scratch build inside my, my RHEL VM to be able to test, and boxes just makes it very nice. So if you work in Red Hat and you have to maintain a package in multiple versions of RHEL and test this, this is a, a great tool for you if you don't want to really mind about understanding virtualization. So easy downloads, uh, thanks to LibOS Info, which is this library that we have that it's basically divided in, in, in two basic concepts, which one, one of them is a database, which we ha describe uh, operating systems, uh, their requirements, the devices they support, and then a tooling set that allows for detecting ISOs and images and uh, installation trees and match them to this database. So the idea behind boxes is that given an ISO, we are able to detect it and uh, set the right defaults to it, whether it supports virtio SCSI for something or not, and the user actually doesn't need to mind anything, and most of the default setup is it's good, it's just performant. So we have, uh, LibOS Info also allows us to have uh, links to the medias which are publicly available on the internet, so Boxes allows us to download images, so if you want to discover some distros or do some distro hoping, or you just don't know where to find ISIS, uh, Boxes can do that. And another great feature that Boxes has is the Express installations, which uh, for detected OSs, for the operating system that we support, we are able to script the installation. So, so far we are able to do uh, Express installations in RHEL, in Debian, OpenSUSE, Ubuntu, Fedora, Fedora Silverblue. So this is pretty neat because you just set up your user account and LibOS Info and Boxes are able to get things from your host and pass it to the guest. So your guest is gonna be set up with your, the profile picture you had on your user account is going to be the same on the guest. That's pretty cool. And um, oh, before I get to that, uh, Fabiano here is the, the chair of the table. He's the main developer of LibOS Info and without him we wouldn't be able to, to do this. So it, it, it's great that with open source software we get to, to make so much by being able to rely on other people's uh, cooperation and 
using uh, other people's work. So the whole Libvirt team, I saw some people here as well in the room, so thanks a lot for that. And drag and drop is something that we get from Spice, which is also something that Boxes uses. And I see some Spice people there in the back as well. Uh, we get to drag and drop things onto the display, and this is something very useful for just getting your scratch builds inside your, your guest VMs. We also support folder sharing, but so far it's using a web dev, which is not so good because it's something focused on web, and I.O. is not so fast. So ideally, we are going to use virtual IOFS, which is something that is being developed. I think it's already been merged on the kernel and in Camo. I've been following closely the libvirt list because virtual IOFS is getting merged in, in libvirt as well. And once it gets there, we're going to get it for free, and this is going to really enable real folder sharing for, for boxes. So well, while we are it, uh, let's open boxes and actually do some demoing. Uh, here, when I search for boxes, you see that there are two entries. Uh, this is also something pretty cool about Flatpak and boxes that uh, we are able to build uh, different uh, application IDs for the same app. So I get to have a boxes nightly build. So every single night, or actually every single commit that gets merged into master, uh, produces a Flatpak build, uploads to our Flatpak repository, and users get these updates automatically if they have GNOME. So if you have GNOME software with automatic updates, this box is like up to date as yesterday. So this is pretty nice. And you also can have your stable and the, your stable boxes, which is the one with the official releases of your distribution. And they share a different namespace. The application IDs are different, so the VMs are not exchangeable between each other, and this allows you to actually not break VMs once a new feature gets introduced. So you get to keep your stable VMs and also play with the new features at the same time. So let's open the unstable boxes, and this is how the welcome screen looks like. And uh, in the meanwhile, I was thinking we could create a VM, and then I'll be talking about boxes. So here, uh, the Create Virtual Machines dialog has uh, detected sources. We use Tracker, which is this GNOME technology that is mining for files and trying to extract information about these files. And that's how we populated this detected resources list. So these are files, like image, bootable images in my downloads folder in my home system that uh, boxes can, can just boot. You see that we are able to assign a logo to them, like a readable username, and that's all thanks to this combination between Tracker and LibOSinfo. Uh, and here below the feature downloads. So distros have also the autonomy to overwrite this. So if you work for another distro and you want to promote something else other than RHEL, Fedora, and Fedora Silverblue, you also get to, to package boxes as such that you can recommend your own apps, your own distros. And here we get like the whole OS info database where you can search, filter, and all. Uh, let's do a Fedora Silverblue, I guess. So here it's already pre-filled from, from my key ring, so my credentials from the key ring. I will just put here devconf maybe, <laughs> so I don't expose my password. And yeah, it's going to create a, a Fedora Silverblue installation with a user account, which has the same username as mine and this password that I'm setting. And here I get some chance to customize. Let's set the memory a little bit higher so I, I get a little bit more of performance. But yeah, this is very straightforward, and I get to create. And yeah, you just can go for a coffee or for DevConf for a talk, and in the meanwhile, the machine is going to get installed. You can also just click on the display and just watch install. It might be therapeutic for some. Uh, remote connections is also something that Boxes has been supporting, uh, because we just get the sense that you have machines you want to manage. Some of them might be virtual. Some of them are, might just be bare metals elsewhere. And uh, even your virtual machines, they could be in a remote broker and boxes would be able to connect to that. So virtual and remote machines, we are treating them the same. You can filter them on the UI, but they, we are treating them the same, and that's why these both uh, belong in boxes. We support VNC connections, RDP connections, and we also act as a SSH client, so in case you just want to have a, a fancy terminal emulator that actually automatically remembers your connections, that's something boxes can do. We also do clones. We do very similarly to the previous talk. Uh, we just copy the virtual machine, recreate the network interface to avoid uh, MAC address conflicts, and snapshots. Once you install a machine in, in boxes, uh, we automatically create a snapshot. This is also like snapshots is a feature that LibVirt has, but 
we just took the next step of, oh thanks, we just took the next step of already going forward and creating a snapshot for you. So once you install the machine, you already have the, the snapshot of the first boot. So you can just install whatever you want, break the machine as much as you want, and then you can just revert to that snapshot. Uh, this is very useful. I can, well actually after you install the, the, the Silver Blue machine, we could check that out. And since we are getting to the second part of the talk, I will talk about what I've been working on lately. Uh, as in work in progress, I have this import-export feature that I've been rushing to, to land in 3.36. Gnome has a, a release now in 5 of March. Uh, I've got it working so far. I have to tweak a little bit of performance issues, but basically we are able to produce an archive which includes the key call of the image, so the, the, the backing disk of the image, and the libvirt file and some extra metadata, including the libwes info XML of that one. So once you create this package, you'll be able to send this to another user and they'll be able to just boot your virtual machine as well. So this can help you to create backups of your virtual machines, import from, import from an old version of boxes to a new version of boxes, I imagine also that a lot of uh, virtual machine oriented uh, deployments, somebody is just cooking up a virtual machine and they are sharing for other colleagues to be able to code in the same environment. So this is something that you can easily do. And hence here the GPU pass through that I mentioned before that uh, two years ago I have a talk. I had a talk here and I, the experiment we were struggling with was to how to automatically unload the, 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 the dedicated GPU driver uh, Tell the tell Grub not to to load, not to not to pass the kernel the, the 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 call to load the driver on the next boot. So we will be free to finally assign the the dedicated GPU to the guest. And actually, Flatpak uh, instead of constraining us because of the container limitation is actually enabling us to to do that because with Flatpak we have portals and portals are privileged uh, processes running on the host, which means that boxes now can do a call over Dbus to a specific portal, and this portal would be able to escalate privileges with police kit, and let's say rewrite uh, the grub entry to not load the driver, unload the driver in case of hot plugging. So GPU pass through is actually going to, to, to come to life in Flatpak before it comes to bare metal because yeah, it's just hard to escalate privileges uh, from application point of view. And with, with Flatpak, you're gonna be able to do that. And here sharing folders with virtio.fs, it's also something pretty cool that uh, the, if, I don't know if, if you folks know, but the Purism is developing a GNOME-based operating system for phones. And uh, one of the, the nice things is that it runs Flatpak apps. So the idea is that you're using GNOME Builder, our IDE, and you build an application and Builder automatically composes a Flatpak bundle and puts this inside of an existing VM you have in boxes, and you get to test this. So we are trying to mimic what uh, Android Studio has, which you get to open an emulator and see an Android there. So this would be very cool for, for GNOME-based or Linux-based uh, phones, but also would be able to work very nicely for Android because we also have uh, Android with x86 uh, support, and uh, one of the features that I want to work on for the next cycles is to support ARM emulation, so then we will be able to even support real OS operating systems. So. A lot of possibilities. But oh, before I get there, let's see how the Silverblue installation is going. Also, it's still copying, writing objects. Yeah, when I experimented at home, it was a little faster than, than 10 minutes. But I guess you get the, the idea. I can, for instance, connect to localhost as a VNC to demonstrate the remote connection features we have. Yeah, fake. The, yeah, so look. Well, I guess you don't need to wait for this. <laughs> so, the idea is that he's going to boot and he's going to already start with a user created with those, with, with those credentials I, 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 I mentioned before. And he also is going to install uh, the Spice Gas agent. So we are going to get for free support for automatic resolution, basing on the window sizing, this drag and drop uh, for sharing the folders and a lot of other nice adjustments like guest integrations. So I, I guess while we install, I could take some questions. Please. Uh, I would like to ask you, uh, I have uh, installed the Debian then, and there is no automation. Uh, Uh, 
Okay, so the question was about uh, why the Express installation didn't work for Debian. Yes. Uh, I guess Fabiano wants to, to do the LibOS info point. Yeah. Yeah, very often distros are moving with their installation process and we are playing catch. We recently had some issue with OpenSUSE and it was just about just adjusting paths and stuff within the, the install scripts. But this is something pretty trivial. The idea is that since distros are mostly based, derived from each other, we are just growing our support base for Express installs. Ubuntu was a, a recent addition. Oh, now the, the machine is rebooting and it's ready. So now we're gonna get a first boot with Fedora Silverblue. So Fedora Silverblue is this uh, OS3 based operating system that we've been promoting on the desktop teams and it's exactly what I'm running on my host. So my host uh, is read only and the boxes you are seeing here is all a flat pack, it's all running inside of a container. So yeah, here we have Silverblue inside the VM. This is the GNOME welcome screen. screen. So you see if I resize the window that is going to take a while to kick in but the guest agent is going to resize the window. So these are like guest host integrations that we have. And something really nice is the, the drag and drop for folder sharing, let's say I have here pictures, so something small. So if I would drag here, then I just get the picture inside the guest. That's very convenient for me. Is it both ways? No, outside of the, out the guest to the host, you need to use folder sharing. So in this case, you just define a, a folder in the host that you want to make it available in the guest, and then you'll be able to exchange files this way. It's something that is worth investigating, but yeah, it gets really complex when you're talking about display server, especially in, in a time where we are speaking about making the display server a much more protected in terms of security. We don't want applications to be like sneaking on each other, so maybe it would work in X, but if we want to move to Wayland, we need to maybe define a protocol for that, so it's not so straightforward. So yeah, I guess more questions? You also had a question? Yeah. Yeah, it's based, on, uh, yeah it, it's based on the OVA, Open Virtualization Appliance Format, and I believe that Virt Manager already supports that format for importing. I think they don't export, but they can import. So they will be, you'll be able to import VMs from boxes into Virt Manager very easily by, by doing this. I wrote this library called libgovf, and it's a library that allows you to manipulate uh, OVF files. OVF is the XML manifest of a of our open virtualization appliance. And the, so this library manipulates this XML and allows you to add disks and, and things like this. So it would be very straightforward for Rit Manager to use this library and be able to import things as well. So this is possible. We still have like a limited uh, amount of support of OVA features. We support only a single disk for now, some very, very basics, but it, it gets things working, especially because in boxes, a lot of people don't have complex setups, especially in, com in terms of network, because we don't expose network settings. So we are able to constrain what's supported or not. But yeah, it would be very nice for, for Virt Manager and also Ovirt. You would be able to cook up a VM and then upload in, into Ovirt. They have a support for OVA as well. Any more questions? Here in the front. No, it's not, yeah. It's, it's in the works with the portal part. Like the boxes part works, but uh, the, the portal part for escalating privileges is, is depending on us writing this devices portal for Flatpak. And my colleague is working on, on this devices portal. And uh, I have a front end on top of that that is GPU specific. Okay. So my use case, I, I stumbled upon a virtual TM. I don't know if you heard that mm -hmm. before. So if you try that, because it's pretty you know, strange to set up, but at some point I got it working. Yeah, yeah, I consider that for bare metal, but for flat pack, I felt like in the container that that wouldn't necessarily work, but it's worth investigating. I didn't actually investigate the possibility of having a box, I just heard about. And uh, as a special use case, so as, as a new version, I don't know if you know Zapier, mm -hmm. so we're using Zapier. So my use case was I wanted to put my virtual machine in another Mm -hmm. 
Uh, let's Well, that actually is not something we have considered, but uh, it, it makes up for a strong use case. I actually think we, we should investigate that, and uh, I feel it would be very straightforward to do it because the, the devices portal would enable us to do any PCI pass-through, so we'll be able to do assignment of hardware devices directly to the, to the, to the guest, so that, that's very doable. So that's good to know, good idea. And, There was in another question. This, you want to? How does the shared folders work on the on virtual box? Because they kind of transparent. I feel they have a virtual driver that most operating systems need to include. So it's more like distros and actually are shipping guest support for virtual box, right? Some VBox guest tools type of thing. So yeah, we are not really on the point where we are getting distros to ship stuff for us, but that would be nice. <laughs> But yeah, I guess with Virtual FS, we wouldn't really need that, so. Any more questions or criticism or ideas for features that is not adding an option for something? Maybe we an option for it. <laughs> Please. Uh, can, you, can you do cloud images? Cloud images, yeah, usually they are distributed as key call images, right? So yeah, we can, like we can import. No installation. You yeah. Yeah, if you have a key call image on, I, I happen to, to not have any downloaded here, I think. But uh, yeah, if I did, you would be able to double click it and boxes would just boot it. Mm -hmm. yeah, so but that, you can try this in the UI. Yeah. It will continue like Debian published cloud image, Ubuntu published cloud image, and will run on the VM system. Like, can you do it with installation, but not installation? Yeah, we, we do this already. Yeah, we support uh, existing installation. We have support for what we call installed images. So mm -hmm. yeah, this works already. Yeah, to add to add, GNOME is uh, composing key call images uh, based on, on nightly builds as well. So you would be able to just boot a GNOME image that is already installed. So, it, and it's, it's generated every day. So that's, that's how we are pointing our designers, translators, documentation, marketing people to test the newest stuff before a release. And that's already something that works. That works. Uh, you had another one, right? Yeah. I would say uh, VirtualBox has uh, a nice exposure of features, just like Virt Manager, but it's not native virtualization, so I guess in terms of performance, we still obtain better performance with KVM. Uh, so if you are aiming for performance, you would go for boxes. If you are aiming for options, I would suggest you go for Virt Manager, not VirtualBox. And yeah, I don't even need to get to proprietary software. Right? <laughs> oh, we are out of time. So thanks for coming. Thanks.